We're at the top of week seven in the FTC decode season, and it's time to start getting serious about building the first competition ready robot. Keep it simple, stupid, keep it easy to maintain. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now, and I've coached FTC teams to national championship wins in our region. And by the end of today's video, your builders, programmers, and outreach team will have a step-by-step plan they should follow, as well as have goals for this week on how to find success in that first competition. So let's hop into the main goals here. This being week seven, in the previous week was where we decided on the design that we're going to take to the first competition. Now that you have a design that you're going to bring that first competition, it's time to actually start constructing those final mechanisms. Hopefully we started taking some time to actually CAD out some of those designs. So for builders, it's time to actually build those competition-ready versions. It's time to start thinking about some more final materials. You may have previously been prototyping, if you have a laser cutter out of plywood or multiplex, maybe four millimeters. Now's a good time to move up to six millimeters or eight millimeters from these designs. Maybe use them for four millimeter polycarbonate if you have access to a CMC machine. If you have access to a 3D printer, it's a good time to move some more engineering style materials. Things like PCTG or PETG are great materials to use for robotics because they have excellent impact resistance and they tend to not fail catastrophically. I personally am not a big fan out of 3D printing out of PLA, PLA plus ABS or ASA mostly because these parts tend to fail catastrophically. While they do have relatively high impact strengths, when they break, they tend to shatter. Whereas PETG and PCTG tend to break a little more gradually. They have a little bit of stress, a little bit of give, they'll flex a little bit. And even though you might not have the most intense tolerance or high strength compared to a PLA or ASA print, In robotics, when it comes to impacts, is something that we face a lot inside of this competition. And having higher impact resistance uh, and a little bit of flexibility and give instead of shattering is likely a good place to go. And lately, I've been really favoring PCTG as a alternative to PETG for my more engineering performance prints. You may also consider using up to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle because typically for functional prints, The extra layer adhesion properties that a 0.6 millimeter nozzle brings adds a little bit extra strength to these as well because those layer lines end up being a little bit fatter, which is quite beneficial for us. You should really be focusing on your durability for these parts as well as your ease of use to repair. So if you have something that's quite thin or if you can't get in to be able to repair that part, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be frustrating. Hopefully that was something you thought about in that previous CAD. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it easy to maintain. You also want to actually start bolting these onto your main unit. This is where modular design comes in. And I would suggest builders that you build one component, then move on to the next component, then move on to the next component. The reason I say that is because if you try to build everything all at once and you don't have finished modular components you can give off to your programmers, Your programmers are just kind of sitting there wiggling their thumbs while they're waiting for you to actually get ready. And this is the benefit here, what the programming team should be focusing on, is as the builders finish those first prototype mechanisms, you should be testing that boilerplate code that you wrote last week on it. You should be having writing data logs and keeping track of how consistent are these mechanisms? How well are they able to start picking things up? And what kind of changes do you have to make to these designs? or what kind of changes you have to make to your motor RPMs, to your sensor values, whatever have you, to be able to make sure you're still having consistent sub-mechanisms working. So as those parts come out, now's a good time to start thinking about, while you're waiting for those parts to come up, how can you integrate sensor logic into that control logic for those sub-mechanisms? So for example, you might have to drive until your distance reader is X or align with an April tag at a value of Y or a value of X, whatever it is that you're using for that, or align until your April tag has a target area of X percentage. So now's the time to actually start testing this. It's not good enough to simply have that code sitting inside Android Studio. You have to actually test it on the robot. Because in my opinion, testing doesn't start till the wheels are on. And this is a Huge thing about physical computing and robotics is that things may work on a computer, but when you go to actually test them in real life, they fall apart pretty quick. 
Uh, because motors are messy, designs are messy, there's a mechanical issue, there's an electrical issue, there's lots of things you can spend time prototyping uh, and spend time trying to debug that may not always just be a coding issue. When it comes to your outreach team, you know, continue with that consistent documentation. I know it seems a little bit boring, but the reality is if you can keep that documentation a little bit more consistent, you're going to find more success with an engineering portfolio. Now might be a good time to share an update with your sponsors about how your team is doing and perhaps saying, hey, this is the direction that we're going to be moving. You may want to start uh, doing some sort of mini robot reveals. That's a big thing in the FTC community, as well as letting your sponsors know how thankful you are for their support and what the support has allowed you to be able to do. So sharing with your sponsors that, hey, you know, your support with cables, your support with USB devices or with an extra monitor or with some extra 3D printing filaments, how it allows us to do X, Y, and Z, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's your main goal for this week is to start building out that final assembly construction. You can have individual modules and have those modules continue to assemble, pass them off to the program team so that they can actually start assembling these things. With your outreach team, continue on the engineering journal notes and then working on thanking your sponsors for the things you've already been able to do. If you're looking for more resources, things like CAD files, things like one-on-one or monthly Q&A streams, you can consider joining the robotics community down below. Otherwise, best of luck out there this season, and maybe we'll see each other on the competition field.